Hi guys, this is Madhav. This is a little bit more of a different video as you can see. I am not going to be on camera because the focus is on these gears. I want to talk about a few basic concepts of gears a little bit visually because I always got confused when I would see videos on YouTube and it's always hard to figure out like what do these math formulas mean without seeing the actual thing. So because of that, I built this little setup where you can see I've got just these wooden slats holding up some gears and they're mounted on these aluminium poles as axles. And I just want to explore, you know, what happens as I rotate these gears by different amounts so that we can figure out a few gear properties. So the first thing that I want to note is that when we think about gears, what we really need to be thinking about is just a bunch of levers connected together. And the best video I saw about this was just this old video, like 60 years old, 70 years old, from, uh, I think, Chevrolet. So I'm just going to paste a tiny clip in here. Now the short arm moves one-fourth the distance but we get four times the force. If we want continuous motion, we need more arms. Now we have levers that turn. The larger paddle wheel makes fewer turns, but it delivers more force. The next thing is I want to talk a little bit about ratios of gears and how gears turn and like gear speeds and all that. So you see these two teeth that are meshing together. Watch what happens to both of those. So they start off horizontal and then they move up and now you see they're slightly over here, around here. I'm going to put them back together to the horizontal position, there they are, move them back up, there they are. What I'm trying to show you is that these teeth are moving the same amount in terms of how much do they, what distance do they travel. We're going to have like some curved section here that the white tooth is moving, some curved section here that the blue tooth is moving, and those curved sections are going to have the same length. So the arc lengths are going to be the same in complicated math wording. So this is the case whenever you have two gears attached they're always going to have the same arc length that they travel. However, note that the arc length traveled, it's not going to be the same portion of the entire circumference of each gear. Because obviously this circumference is bigger, this circumference is smaller. So these two are roughly horizontal, these two slats right here that you can see. Let's watch what happens as I spin these gears. Let's see which of these slats reaches vertical position first. So I'm spinning the gear. You can see this one is about to reach vertical position. And there it is. It's reached vertical position first while this slat is still angled. And I would keep on spinning it. So you see now this has reached vertical position while this slats it ended up you know going diagonally so the key thing that i wanted to illustrate there was that although the same arc length is being moved by both of these gears they're both moving the same distance one of these will rotate more quickly it will do more revolutions per second and the reason is when it moves, you know, let's say this distance, this distance is a larger percentage of its entire circumference compared to, you know, when the same distance is moved here for this gear from horizontal to up top, this is a smaller percentage of its entire circumference. So for every revolution of this white gear, you can see that the blue gear 
it's going through more revolutions another thing that i hope you'll see is that the blue gear it's moving faster if you look at any of the teeth in the video you'll see that the blue gear is moving well it's rotating faster so this is why we actually use gears you know one of the big one of the best things about them is we can take let's say a big gear connect it to a small gear and now we can get more rotational speed so we only have to rotate this white gear at some rates and then the the blue gear it will spin faster so gears are often used for converting rotational speeds so that one moves faster than the other we could also do it in reverse let's say we have this thing moving very quickly and we wanted to slow down the speed for the white gear okay if we wanted to slow down the speed then we would connect our small gear to a larger gear this one the blue gear in this case this would be let's say attached to a motor and because it has a smaller circumference that means for every revolution of the blue gear the white gear is not going to finish a revolution so these are the key concepts explained visually that you have the same displacements in terms of you know the arc length for both gears however because one is big one is small you can change the rotational speed of one gear versus the other in my case there's a sacrifice in that i can't just get magically more or less speed the sacrifice is that i have to adjust energy usage based on how much my fingers are moving because in this case we're considering work equals force times distance in a real engine a real motor it may not be the amount of energy that's changing all the time it might just be torque and uh, angular displacement in technical terms um, so this is still a very useful simple machine that we now understand some key concepts of and if you want to continue with the mathematical videos on youtube you know the ones that explain all the formulas then I will refer you to the links in the description where you can get now a more detailed formulaic understanding of what we're talking about.